All right, well, uh, welcome back from the coffee break. And, you know, we've been kind of discussing what we were, what the second half of this interview is going to be like. As we were talking, you know, Pat's going to be kind of, you know, taking a little walkabout for a while, as, uh, as, I, as I put it just now. Um, and, and we were thinking, you know, since, since uh, Paul's going to be helping us out here, we're thinking kind of his, uh, his little trial by fire would be to interview Pat, you know, because we haven't, you know, maybe it's time for him to be in the hot seat for a while and time for... Yeah, uh, Paul's done no research and I've get done no preparation. Paul's done no I research. We've done I'm no preparation. About. I don't know anything. So, so keep your, this is keep your, your expectations low. Pat. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Pat, uh, you decided to show up for your exit interview. Uh, uh, Mr. Four Bits here with HR, HR at Mr. Four Bits. Paul with HR at Mr. Four Bits will be yeah. giving you your inter exit interview, Pat. So yeah, I'm, I'm having visions of uh, the movie Office Space now, right? So, Pat, what would you say you do here? <laughs> I I'm a people person. I'm good at dealing with people. Why can't you see that? Yeah, you take the specs to the from the customer to the the salespeople yeah. or, or the fax machine sometimes. But you know, if you have a fax machine these days, you're really kind of a special person, and you know, so that's true. Yeah, we were so, told that if somebody who had three fax machines is very at home would be very important. We learned that from Back to the Future too. Ah, uh, good times. It's been a while since I've, since I've heard that. Because. So. Uh, That'd be old Marty McFly. He got fired three times by, via fax at home. Right. Hmm. <laughs> so, Pat, like... So, Paul. You've been doing this podcast for a while. For a while. I, Me and Jeremy were talking about this. I think I came in somewhere around episode four, low 40-something. Okay. Maybe high 30-something. Was that what we... Yeah, we'll say. You know what? I'll I'll do. I'll be the uh, information guy. I'll, I'll look it up, Pat. And you, uh, you. I'll be the what's uh, the how, how I'll, long, I'll be the, the Jamie. You... you know, you get you get listen to uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, Jamie, you look that up. Uh, Jeremy, look that up. So I'm I'm playing that guy today. There you go. So, so what? Uh, how how long is that in people time? I'm gonna say, what year is this now? 2024 March. 2024. Could it be like five years, Jeremy? Could that be right? Look that up. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up now, but my uh, my internet's. Uh, I'm. I I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying out for the Joe Rogan show here. So apparently, so apparently he wouldn't. I'd be right, fired well, pretty Jeremy, fast. Jeremy, you can edit this out. I'm gonna look it up. Because <laughs> I want to know now. Now one. Let's see. Forty-two. Forty-one. Thirty-nine. 39. Let's do 39. There's an introducing episode before that, but that doesn't count. You don't the think so? The first interview was 39. So, so, so this, what year was that? Uh, three years ago, it says. Three sounds. years ago, it says. Okay. So 2021. So, so post, post pandemic in the, in the after COVID era, apparently. That's yeah, right. It is. See, I assumed it was pre because I don't remember. You've blocked out the event. Well, I just don't understand, <laughs> I guess. I just, I'm wrong is all i figured it was the oh, year before right. not the i mean that's not really the year after but that's the well so, pat November let me ask COVID. you uh how do you feel the podcast has changed during your tenure here well we added video paul okay before me episode 37 was audio only ah that is pretty big that's a big change ain't it yeah do you feel like you've tried to tailor the podcast to appeal to the YouTube crowd at all? No, I wanted to, but Jeremy's against it. He says okay. he says we need big, long podcasts and not little short podcasts. We uh, okay. YouTube likes little content. Yeah, I mean now it's shorts now, right? That's but and Jer but Jeremy's been doing a good job of turning our interviews into shorts. Okay. Yeah. So you can't condense a two-hour interview into a sixty-second short. You got to have lots of them. Yeah. Oh. But but thank you, thank you, Pat. There's a robot. There's a robot. My robot servants. So. Will do so I thing. I guess I could look this up, but what would you say your target length for our podcast has been? Like my target length, or the, or or <laughs> or Jeremy's, whoever's whoever's calling the shots here. So, so, I, I'm, I'm going to say about an hour. 
Oh, really? Okay. Sometimes they come in closer to 45. Sometimes they come in closer to a little over an hour. But I'm going to go with an hour. Okay. Pat, Pat wanted. Pat did want to cut things down a bit. You know, cut it into chunks or, or what have you. And you know, I, I suppose. I suppose you could say we we compromise on you know kind of mostly splitting up into half hour segments, you know that, you know as I said that's probably not, probably not ideal for YouTube to be honest. But you know there's mm. kind of a question of are we going for the YouTube audience, or the, um, you know podcasting audience and, right. you know there's a lot of, you can kind of argue that either, either way. So I, I don't know. So, I like that the video's there, Jeremy. Yeah, no. Even I, if we're not optimizing it for YouTube to hand it out to people, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I get to hold things up to the camera and say, "Look at how cool this is!" And yeah, and then the podcast listeners are very confused. Well, yeah. Jeremy does a good job of describing the things that I hold up, that's, but that's, that... I like that somebody could go and look and see if they want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try to describe things, and in fact, Pat just held up uh, look like a Game Boy or something. Um, but he I have to, like a Game Boy. I have to make a He's small, right. small little correction. It looks like we did have a video starting with episode 33. However, when Pat came on, he, he, uh, he both encouraged and he, he basically encouraged me to, to get, to get better with it. So I'm using my Sony a 6600 camera now, which takes a little bit of setup. We're also using riverside.fm, which has been a fantastic platform for actually having people on without the stress of trying to figure out how to record it locally and stuff i mean that's been mm -hmm. yeah i mean i would say that's yeah i'd say i'd say that's what pat does here if, if you need that uh <laughs> and i take the specifications from the customers and i hand it to the developers that's that's awesome that is very valuable don't be jumping to conclusions what what was your uh what sort of metrics for success did you give yourself for the podcast? What, what, what were your goals coming into it? I'm going to tell you, Mr. Paul Forbith, that yes. tracking the success of a podcast is really challenging. Mm -hmm. We have no idea how many people actually listen. Because, you know, some the podcast is available and, you know, there's like, five or six major places that mirror your podcasts. And right. some of those will give us, you know, they'll at least give you download statistics, but then there's dozens of other places where people might be listening. Right. And yeah, you don't know what I, I wish I had the, this. I cannot look up for you, Paul, but I don't, we, we kind of figured out how well we think we're doing. Hmm. We think we're somewhere between, 300 and a thousand listens per episode does that okay. does that sound like my memory's right jeremy yeah th that's about right i mean but but you're right, right pat but by, but I that's th going back and adding up all the places as best we can and you know hoping that we're getting it right 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 but i mean you, but th you, th you think about that what that's... i thought would be a success and i'm not even sure because i didn't understand where we were when we started <laughs> right right <laughs> right <laughs> It, it's funny, well, I was listening you know, to another podcast, and he said something that's like, yeah, you know, depending on what numbers you want to put out there, I, I, I get, you know, my last episode got 30 million downloads. I was like, how does he know that? I, I, you know, it's like, does he, does he know something I don't? And maybe he does, but mm. it's like, you know, he was quick to, to, even he was quick to like, you know, couch that in the fact that, you know, depending on everyone, if you want to say impressive numbers or, or not. So, so maybe right, he's right. the same way. Maybe it's between... 1 million and 30 million, you know, it's, I, I don't know, either way. That's well, you know, I, I imagine once you're making enough money as a podcaster, you can pay a service to track this for you. Like, I'm sure there's something like the Nielsen ratings for podcasts. And yeah, well, and there's a, a big deal data. about this going on right now because Apple changed the way their podcasts are distributed. It used to be, a podcast get past, ugh, a podcast gets published and your pot your Apple's podcast app would download it immediately basically immediately now mm -hmm. they don't download it unless you click the list that's good cuz i was going to say uh, i was but, definitely one of those podcast listeners who had a dozen unlistened to podcasts downloaded and was skewing the numbers <laughs> yep that's 
And this is a bummer, apparently, because a lot of big podcasts schedule their their sponsors up to a year in advance, mm-hmm. and now the numbers changed. Like they, yeah. you would, you would negotiate and you say, "I guarantee that you're going to be on the June episode, and there's going to be a million downloads." Right. There's not a million downloads anymore. Now everybody's downloads drop to a fraction. Right. So now their contract that they signed nine months ago. Right. They're not going to meet the goal. They still have, they still have to do the episode, put the pitch in the episode, but they're not going to meet the numbers to get the payment they're supposed to get. But yeah. Wow. To, to me, that's kind of meaningless though, because the the numbers have changed. I mean, it's kind of like, well, I don't know. I just well, it's, it's the same as it always was, right? <laughs> just right. The, so definitely, the advertiser should have been saying, "Okay, a million downloads. How many listeners is that?" And they should have been pricing that into the model. But who knows if they were? Right. right. Well, but they're excited because they signed a contract and they're going to get X number. They're of not going to have to pay. Yeah. yeah. Even though they know they know it's the same number of listens. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it kind of reminds me, you know, people don't always accommodate in contracts for changing technology. I mean, you know, the biggest, it's not technology. Well, I guess you could argue that, but you know, the biggest thing you can see is like, like COVID you see some of the things that went on. I, I remember um, seeing something about how Scarlett Johansson was suing something about the Black Widow production, how it wasn't put out as many and as many theaters as, as she was guaranteed. It's like, well, I understand her point, but I understand the other point too. And it's like, you know, you didn't think about this. And I, th- I think about like um, technology wise, like um, uh, Top Top Gear, that show. Now, this is totally third hand information, but you notice Top Gear got canceled and then they put out almost the exact same show on Amazon called uh, The Grand Tour. Mm-hmm. And my understanding mm-hmm. is that ba- way back when they signed the contract for that, they said, well, you know, there was nothing about streaming or, or whatever. It's like, the contract was you can't make a show like this for TV or video or, or whatever else. Well, yep. nobody thought you could be watching this on the internet in, in 30 years or whatever it is. So, mm. you know, this is a smaller, you know, you can't, you can't predict technology. You try to, you try to put all this stuff in your contract, nope. but yep. you know, things are different. So there are TV shows that never made the leap to uh, DVD and will now never be on streaming just because of the licensing of the music that was in the show. They didn't license it to put it in any other format other than broadcast TV and now yeah, they're they stuck. They swap out a lot of music in yeah. 80s yeah. and 90s shows. What, when what, uh, what, what show would this, yep. what shows would this be? Like, what's an example? Like Almost everything. Oh, really? uh, but a, a, a great example for fans of the show was Homicide Life on the Streets, which was about, uh, you know, cops in Baltimore and they had some crossovers with Law and Order. They were using popular music in their show all the time. And yeah. it's like disentangling it from the show would be way too much work. And licensing the music, forget about it. Even in even just within the music sphere, there's a famous album on record. It is um, Weird Al doing Peter and the Wolf with an orchestra. I've seen this in the music store. Yeah. Oh, well, I had I had a copy of it on tape that was taken oh, I'm from jealous. the record, um, but uh, it never made the move to CD because in order to do it, they would have to track down every individual that was in oh. the orchestra in order to license that to put it on CD. It's like, like that's bizarre, right? Like that that's that we're stuck uh with this bit of music history right that i guess we can't listen to until the copyright runs out well, right and uh, in theory some be... of these people might be might be dead i mean not to be morbid but yeah. you know it's been whatever <laughs> yeah so you know you gotta contact their family somehow and yeah it's, it's that'd be nearly yeah. impossible yeah it'd it be would easier be. to re-record it yeah yeah it would be get a new orchestra and have weird Al re-record yeah. it that would be great yeah In fact, there is, uh, believe it or not, there is a service that focuses on re-recording clips for use in DJ music, right? That makes sense. So, yeah. So, like, uh, you may remember um, Steve Winwin's Valerie, 
where he's singing, uh, call on me, Valerie. Uh, that was in a, uh, a, a sort of techno DJ song that totally blew up a few years ago. And it wasn't original to the guy who made the song. Like the idea of using that clip had been done by DJs before, but they only did it in live performances and they refused to record it because they could not clear the clip and they didn't want to pay as much money as they would need to to use that clip. So the guy who ended up recording it actually contacted Steve Winwood, had him work with this company that will sort of recreate the music he wrote using him to re-record it. They basically re-recorded that clip, made a new master so that it could be used by a DJ in a new song. So With, with the same guy singing. Yeah, with the same guy singing. Yeah, this is very much like Taylor Swift re-recording her entire discography, right? So that she could re-license it fresh. Yes, that is exactly it. Because she, I guess she didn't own the, the master recordings. Hmm. So she had to remake the master recordings. And of course, that means pulling in people who uh, were guests on songs and and you know, Taylor Swift's got enough pull. She can get the original singers to come in, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, you, that's business. That's you, copyright you know, right, right there. You know, that being said, that said, Paul, since, since Pat's going to be stepping, doing his walkabout for a while, um, and you'll be stepping in, do you think we should go ahead and re, re, re um, uh, redo all of our previous episodes so we can re, redo all the previous podcasts? To, yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to pay me my commission. Throw throw Pat down the memory hole and <laughs> like the Soviets will erase him from everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. Speaking of that, he seems like you've got He's a bit of a... out all the photos. Is that... you got a bit of a Trotsky, Trotsky type beard there going on, Paul. Is that a... <laughs> Paul, Paul has a uh, bit of a beard and a couple, a couple of streaks. He looks like um, maybe somebody from uh, like the Running Man movie or something um slash uh maybe trotsky you know he looks like a yeah looks... no this is this is just getting old i, I um, don't know about goodness 15 years ago when i was teaching i had a student ask me why i dyed my beard red <laughs> and i'm like you think i put way too much time into my hair i also had a student ask me why i put my hair in curlers to get this wave I'm like, no, kids, this is this is all natural. All my natural. beard it used just to happens. Be, yeah, my beard used to be red. Okay. And so uh red enough that the kids thought I dyed it, but now I've gotten old, it's gotten darker, I've gotten the uh the white spots. Um I mean it looks looks kinda cool. Such though, is life. I'm I okay think. with it. Um Yeah, oh, thank but, you. But uh but but Paul, I feel like I feel like you haven't been uh you know, asking you need to ask some more hard cutting questions of Pat, though, since this is a hard cutting podcast. I think. I think. So, uh... <laughs> Jeremy, we joke about that. It's, That's true. It's not really a hard hitting podcast. That was just. That was just a joke, <laughs> Pat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess you're we, right. We don't want people to be scared to be on the show. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. We definitely don't want to. Yeah. Why do you dye your beard red? I. I don't. I never did. <laughs> And look how dark it is. It's got kind of, it's gotten dark except for the white spots. So, yeah. No, I don't look like a ginger anymore, but that's okay. But uh, uh, Pat, I guess. Yes. Um, where where are you leaving us for? What's your next thing? Oh, I don't have a next thing. You don't have I'm, a next uh, thing. No. Are, no. Are, well, I mean, you're gonna yeah, be I doing. I did not plan. I planned nothing ahead. I just. You, uh, said... You're gonna be doing something with your time, right? Well, is it probably. just going to be more coffee, yeah, less not talking? Anything, not talking to anyone. Just, okay. uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll it's be right. there in your cave meditating. I'll be here in my cave with my, my janky sound panels back here that are in the wrong spot now that I moved my desk. And I was going to uh, ask you about that because I have not done any sound preparation for this room. So I may have a little bit of an echo on my audio. I don't know. Actually, it sounds, um, it sounds pretty weird. good to it's... me, to be honest. But okay, it does. I think you know, honestly, you got those bins behind you. It, it's, I, I imagine that breaks up the sound pretty, pretty well. 
because it's it's kind of a yeah. like like a bookshelf almost except with electronics so you can imagine the sound wave just you know like a stealth bomber they just bounce and just sound every wave. which way like the transformer <laughs> like what yeah but multiple of them <laughs> i don't know i no yeah uh yeah, there there is a lot of stuff in here. I know if I took some of it out, it would probably echo more. But um, uh, I don't know. We'll just have to keep an ear on it and see if it needs to be uh, see if any sound deadening needs to happen. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, you know Pat had it. I want to say professionally set up, but not professionally set up, but but set up by somebody who is a professional who did it you know, helped him out with it for, for free. Is that, is that, yeah. is that it, accurate? It fact? definitely worked better when I was over there. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, here. I, I, yeah. but I, I can tell you, you, I don't want to clap loud on the mic here because it's right here. But if you, if you clap your hands loud, you can hear the echo. And then we put Damn. the panels up and we clapped and it was significantly, you could just hear the clap. You nice. didn't really hear the reverb of the, the two other claps that happened yeah. after usually. Yeah. But I, I feel well, like 90% of the people who have the, get... the panel set up, they just kind of do it randomly, Pro probably including myself, to be honest, because I've got some panels up there behind me. And it looks pretty cool. It looks almost like um, whatever those things are you put on your the corners. What do you call that? Paneling? Angle? Do you, do you want me to tell you the oh, secret? Oh, molding. Molding. Crown molding. Like yeah, crown molding. molding? Yeah. Yeah. But go ahead. Do you What's know the secret, secret, Jeremy, to where you put your sound panel? Is it just wherever you want? Is that the secret? No, right in front of, <laughs> right here, where it comes out of your face, straight in front of you, and then straight behind you. Right. Okay, so basically, so you're trying to get a cancel out that balance. Is that the? Is that the? Um... Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, and I go. have no sound panels in front of me anywhere. There's a hollow core closet door in front of me here. Hollow which core is closet door. Absolutely terrible. Sounds like, like a, nice I'm got a window at it in right front now. of me. I can see it. Nice. Well, uh, Mr. Forbes, is there anything else you need to ask Pat before we uh, before we close out the podcast? I feel like, yeah, or anything you want to tell or, us? Yeah, anything you want to tell us? Um, or plug or. Uh, well, I mean, there's certainly things I could plug. I mean, uh, except for I mean, it you all don't has have to. This it all has to be you. very vague because. Uh, I don't have any new products ready just yet, so maybe we'll hold off on announcing anything. Yeah, uh, I am working on a contract right now, um, which is great. You know, it'll pay me a few thousand dollars. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I like money. Yeah, oh. money's great. And that's the thing I think about more and more is like, for for each hour I put into something. You know, you hate to just think about how much monetary return am I getting, but you got to think about that to some degree in order to be bringing in enough income that you feel like your money is actually worth, some, or your time is actually worth yeah, something, absolutely. right? Yeah. I mean, is there a number you guys aim for in terms of uh, your productivity per hour? Oh, man. That's Not a, while you're no. doing the podcast, of that's course. A, that's a whole... You mean in general? So, yeah, yeah, in general. Yes. Yeah. How, yes. how much was Jeremy paying you to hang around and talk to him, Pat? Yeah. Paul, I can tell you that my <laughs> my my Tindy store is very low volume, right. but my hourly return is probably somewhere between one hundred and fifty and two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. Wow, that's pretty good. But I only sell. You know, I only spend an an hour every quarter. You know, or oh. something. You know, I'm not. <laughs> I don't, if you could ramp that up to, you know, 40 hours a week, it would be amazing, but I don't do that right. kind of volume. At yeah. All. yeah. Yeah. So wait, what, what's the name of your store on Tindy again? Oh, I don't know. It has a name. It probably yeah. has like Pat's head in it or something. Oh yeah. Pat's head. Okay. Well, you got to know the name if you want people to find your stuff, right? Well, I, do I? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I this have is a link on my blog. Okay, right up at the top there. It's a look. You don't even have to know the name. You just click it, and it takes you straight there. Well, now we have to know the name of your blog. Tell the audience. Oh, well, that's at patshead dot com. Pat's yeah. Pat's. There you go. So 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 Pat, um, you know this being 
Well, first, can I show you guys something? Sure. Yeah, sure. I'm off by, I'm I'm two minutes too late here. I order uh, unroasted green coffee beans from Ooh. SweetMarias.com. It's fantastic. But for two dollars, they'll send you the burlap bags, the sixty kilogram bags that the coffee comes in. And they sent me this cool one. This time with this. Do you guys know what that is? It looks looks like a, a skunk on the, the bag. It says washed oh, see, said, see, I thought it was a squirrel at first, but I was looking at it upside down. Hmm. Yeah, that's nice. It does kind of look like a skunk because of the white stripe. Yeah, I believe that too now. Hmm. But these $2, I want to turn them into sound panels, Jeremy. That's a, fan, that's a fantastic idea. I've been waiting for good ones like this one with this skunk on it to come in. Okay. Yeah. And with coffees I like. On the, this one has a nice Ethiopian coffee on the front. Nice. So I can make two nice sound panels out of it. It's only the from, first time a really good one came in. It's only from nice Ethiopians? Yeah. No, no mean Ethiopians make the coffee? These ones are nice. And I've got a Rwanda bean that has a really cool uh, elephant on the bag. Okay. I'm excited about that one. So now I'm up to three. I, I can make three good sound panels that can oh. go behind me here. Well, that'll, that'll be awesome. Good deal. Um, so if you ever let me co-host again, maybe they'll be up here by yeah. then. Well, the invitations, the invitations open. So, oh yeah, well, so... now this makes me think of something. So we've talked about sound, but what about light? Do you make an effort for lighting in your uh, studio there? I very much do. I I've been some effort. and I'll tell you, I've been making small. I made small improvements for the first year and a half, and then I hit kind of a wall where now, if I want better lighting, it's going to cost me a lot of money mm -hmm. i have a soft box right here that you can't you can't see any of this because you're on the wrong side of the camera no I but i can tell where it is here. <laughs> this one lives above my monitor and this one okay. just turn it on and off hey all right yeah pat just turned off the lights and this turned is it on. what i look like without the lighting looks yeah. looks much much more terrible this is terrible but you switch that back but much more terrible and i've got a second softbox that i put up just to take the shadow off of this side mm -hmm. but yeah paul, paul but this look, is only like 80 good. dollars in lights this is not fancy but paul looks yeah this good, is just uh indirect light from the window oh window lights fantastic oh, yeah go. yeah nice. i've got two windows in this room so nice. you're lucky that the clouds don't keep coming by that's sometimes a bummer when you have the when you're using the window light and yeah. you keep going dim and bright, dim and bright the whole episode. Oh, uh, what can I say? It's a beautiful day out. Yeah, a beautiful day to be inside podcasting, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well, it's only 10 a.m. here where I am. There's still uh, lots of day left. Well, so so Paul, we will be seeing you some coming up. Um, where where can we find you okay. though? Um, generally speaking. If we wanted to find yeah, you. what's the name of your Tiddy store? <laughs> ah, mine is Four Bit Industries. So I'm Four Bit Industries on Tindy, but you can go to fourbitindustries.com. You can buy my uh, Learn to Solder kits directly there and save me the uh, Tindy fee. So, nice. you know, consider that also. Nice. And if you want to find me on Tindy, I think but, I believe uh, I'm, I'm Jeremy Cook there. And I'm, um, you know, you can also find me on my. My website, jeremyscook.com or YouTube. Um, yeah, I've been trying to do some audio stuff under a JCO audio on YouTube. So that, that's something I've been kind of pursuing. But look, Pat, uh, it's, your, it's your last time perhaps for a while. Your last time for now. So Pat, what? let's, let's let you, why don't, why don't you close out the show and let us know any final thoughts that you have? Is that, that sound fair? Sure. Well, Jeremy, I can tell you I've had a good time the last, uh, what did we decide? Three years? Three yeah. years, yeah. Yeah, we've had some amazing guests. We've had, I mean, all the guests have been great. And some have been slightly better than great. Like, you know, some are 9s and some are 9.5s, maybe. Even can, 10, maybe. Can I say that? And it's been, it's been fun meeting all these new people and talking to new people. And, you know, it's been a good time. I learned a lot. And you encouraged me to have this fantastic uh, lighting set up here. So thank you, Jeremy. And uh, thank you. I want to thank everybody for listening to us all these years. And I hope yep. everyone will continue to listen to uh, Jeremy and Paul here. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Paul's Paul's continuing on. We've got a P, a P name so I can, you know, 
not confuse him so much with with Max or whatever. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> yeah. Well, I said I Jeremy has a lot of trouble with names. I do. Indeed. Maybe not a lot, but enough. It's well, I we have know plenty. we know he does. Is all. That's a good place to end the podcast. I think. <laughs> I'm okay with that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, go ahead, Pat. Why don't you... All right. You guys did a good job. Yeah. Thank you.